Um, and I, I sent a video to, to Daryl and I said, listen, look at these two games and let me know what you think. And so he sent me a report back and then we spent a lot of time together talking about what would be the most appropriate thing, how to work with the team, what philosophy should the team have, what are the biggest weaknesses and so on and so on. So we spent many, many hours over the Zoom. Um, I was still in Canada, he was in Toronto. Um, and I also wanted to have someone who is not involved with the team uh, emotionally, uh, physically, has nothing uh, at stake, uh, yet uh, can be honest with me and uh, can give me a completely different point of view um, and be non-attached to the whole process. So in the past, obviously, it was always Wally, it was Tim, uh, it was other people, uh, but I thought for this job, I, I chose Daryl because I like the way he sees the game um, and a lot of, we have a lot of similarities, the way we grew up in the coaching ranks. Um, so there was a trust factor and um, yeah, and that's how we approached it. So this is what we showed the girls. We had three objectives um, and Another story to that is before I took the job or when I took the job, I was still in Canada. So I zoomed with the first five, six girls on the team, meaning first the most senior leaders um, that, you know, were captains, assistant captains. And uh, we spent about, gosh, three times, four hours talking about this playbook. And I was explaining the playbook to them and um, was teaching the playbook to them. And then they had to form groups of five or six with all the other national team members, and they had to teach the playbook to them. So I first taught it to the five players, the leaders, and then the leaders were teaching the playbook uh, to the rest of the team before we even had a first meeting. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions, please, it's a long presentation, so don't wait till the end. Make sure you interrupt me and ask questions. Um, so the first point is for me, 30 years in coaching, I was always the same. I always wanted to uh, dominate uh, through philosophy, through playing philosophy, through playing strategy, and through the attitude that we have. And obviously the playing philosophy was to possess the puck as much as we can. And um, our attitude, I, I will come back to that, was that we are absolutely relentless, that no matter what happens to us, we will always have a, some positive response. So it's not going to be about what happens to us, but how we respond to it. Um, so that was the first um, objective. And uh, when, I, when the girls saw the world, the word um, dominate, they were quite taken back because in Czech Republic in women's hockey, they were not used to dominate the oppon opponents. It was always about not losing, um, always about hopefully today it's going to work out. Hopefully today we'll have a good game. Uh, there was a lot of hoping and hopefully we are not going to relegate from the A group. And, you know, hopefully today our goalie will be good. So that was their main attitude. So. The first point was quite shocking to them, and it took me a lot of time and a lot of convincing all the way till the end to the Olympics that uh, they are an excellent, exceptional hockey team. And yes, they can through the through their attitudes and through the game strategy and playing philosophy, um, they can dominate. And the statistics I will show you will underline that. So the second objective, extremely important, is to change public perception and attitude towards women's hockey in Czech Republic. And um, before the Olympics, before the Olympic qualifier, uh, I would say 80, maybe 90% of all people in Czech Republic did not know that women play hockey. So we are in year 2021, and before we actually made it to the Olympics, most people in Czech Republic did not know that women play hockey. And very extremely surprised. Like most women here, it was like, oh, I didn't know that girls play hockey. Oh, I always thought, you know, that's it's a men's game. So for us, and we knew that. So for us, we knew through success, through winning, 
and through a great product, um, how we play, how we present ourselves, we will change the public perception of women and women playing hockey. And I think if anything, we have succeeded in that. We have tremendously succeeded in that. And actually, uh, when we played the qualifying game, the final game against Hungary, that we won 5-1. Uh, at the same time, the Czech men's national team was playing Finland, and we had more viewers uh, than the men's game. And we had, like, at the time, 500,000 viewers, which was absolute record and absolutely unheard of that more people would watch the women's game before the men's game. So the girls have really succeeded in that in the last two years to change the public perception. And the third one was a long term to build a solid and lasting foundation of hockey culture for future girls and women playing in Czech Republic, which is a long, long road. I think because of COVID and because of all the closed arenas for almost two years, we haven't made much strides. But because of the success and the publicity of the girls, I think way more girls will be open now to play the game. Oh, thank so that was the first page. Any questions to that or any comments on that? So the first group there, a lot of good players. Tom, I, Tom I've got a question. Um, of all the three points, in, to me, in what you've said, the dominant was the hardest thing to get across, that belief. Yes. The nation. Can you comment on that again? Like I... When I saw that, for you to come in and present it that way, that was a very courageous thing to do. Can, can you describe that a little bit more? Yeah, I, it, it, it was the hardest thing because it, it's so foreign to them. It was so, they were brought up in a society where women should be cooking and uh, should be in the kitchen and not, not playing hockey. And when they were playing hockey, uh, they were coaching, coached by men who were telling them they are no, no good. And that only because of their men's, men's coaching, they are any good. And, and so there was a lot of, lot of put downs and a lot of uh, things that the girls had to go through. And the, so their natural thing was not, okay, I'm going to play hockey. And the way I play is going to be going to dominate the opponent. So, it took a long time just showing them how good they are. So a lot of videos of, hey, you guys are great players and being really, really positive and reinforcing. And until today, until the Olympics, I still don't think I have succeeded. I think that they still doubted it and they still didn't believe me because there is such a natural... Uh, and, and, and not all of the players, I think there was a lot of players that did believe me, but a lot of the players just have a natural mistrust to, to authority and to men in general. And so um, it, it was not an easy task. But when you will later see the videos, how we played, um, I think that, you know, the, a lot of the girls have realized how, how good they are and how good they can be. Thank you. So I'll just... You know, again, um, 